Well, I'm driving to work and I'm going to get a nucleic acid test. And then tomorrow we're going to go back to classes at school. And I thought I'd test my phone's 4K filming capacity and share, folks, share with everybody a little bit of what my drive to work looks like. It's really quite pretty. You know, you think about China as being very urban everywhere you go, and that's true, especially as you travel across northern China. There's just cities, sort of like pockets of civilization, and then there's massive, massive fields of farmland just as far as the eye can see, but Northeast China is different. There's a lot of uh, areas which are mountainous and there's a lot of woods, although in the most, most places the woods have been cut down uh, and are coming back or are still just being harvested every few years for, uh, for firewood. And that's one reason why the air is so horribly polluted in China, because so many people still burn wood for their basic necessities. It's a very, very common thing. Even in this, I guess you'd say, very modern city by Chinese standards, Dalian is quite modern. It's not Shenzhen, it's not you know, Hong Kong or Beijing or Shanghai. It's not on that level, but it's quite modern overall and quite clean by Chinese standards as well. But still, there's a lot of people on the periphery in areas like this who heat their homes with wood, cook with wood, and at night they have kongs, which are concrete or brick beds that they heat from underneath by burning wood. So they're constantly burning fuel, and that fuel is uh, polluting the environment. So every evening around dinner time, when you drive through the countryside, you will see smoke everywhere from the evening fires coming up the chimneys. Anyway, I'm not sure why I started talking about that. I find it interesting. Maybe that's why. But the fact that there has been some level of say forest protection and a, a bit of a rise of nature preservancy or something like that, uh, an effort to preserve nature, uh, has meant that all around me right now there's just forests and I get to drive through these forests on the way to work. It's quite beautiful. If I could hold my cell phone and point to the left now, you'd see a huge forest. Most of the trees are young, but still quite beautiful. This is also the biggest hill in the area. It's a three kilometer ascent. Quite steep in some places, for me anyway. For a chubby guy like me. The first time I did it, I thought I wasn't gonna make it to the top. <laughs> After riding it five or six more times, I've come to realize slow and steady, as they say, wins the race and it's really not that hard. bit more about this area. You can see on the left there, a little bit through those tall uh, evergreen trees, whatever they are. Uh, these, the flowers are blossoming in all the fruit orchards all around Dalian. So this part of Dalian also has lots of fruit orchard, orchards. There's pears, peaches, cherries, uh, apples, uh, some other Chinese fruits, parsimons, is that how you say that? Uh, here you can see there's a lot of bushes, flowering bushes around this city too. So Dalian to me is really, I mean, it may sound kind of goofy, but it's a city of flowers. All year long there are flowers that grow, the blossoming in the spring and then the wildflowers that come up shortly thereafter. 
and it's just beautiful. Dalian is really beautiful in that way. Okay, today I'm going to go pick up Ed, a fellow teacher, and we are going to go in together to get our nucleic acid test. So a few more minutes and I'll be there. Maybe I'll film for 10 minutes. feels kind of silly to film without commentary, although my commentary is not particularly insightful. Here you can see some folks by the side of the road selling fruit. They've got plums, cherries, tomatoes, eggs. Um, very nice, good prices. It's always best to buy food by the side of the road because <clears throat> it's sort of uh, raw capitalism <laughs> and you can get the lowest prices with street, street side uh, vegetables and fruits. <clears throat> and they're really uh, fresh and good often. It's locally grown stuff. You might save 50% by shopping by the side of the street. You can see here, perhaps, the trees are just starting to uh, bud. So there's like a green coating over all of the trees now. It's just coming out, just starting to turn into little leaves. It's very, very beautiful. That almost yellow green of the springtime. Really pretty. I used to drive on this road, on these roads, uh, when I was exploring the city and going out into the woods and the countryside and I'd ride my bike through here often. I never imagined this would be my road to work, but when I switched jobs, I left my previous job at the kindergarten and came to work at this sort of fake international school. Uh, I was so happy to have my commute be this. Of course, my previous commute was just riding my bicycle down a hill and was about two kilometers from my front door, my, my previous job. This one is more like 25 minutes to a half an hour drive. But the pay is so much more, it's just not even worth talking about. So, and the drive is nice. Here you get to see a little village, sort of, on this road. And then some modern development a little further up. These are more like the old, traditional countryside Dalian houses that have been around for a while. And up ahead are the new apartment complexes um, that have been built in the last decade. Also very nice. So in my opinion, Dalian, if you can get out of the city and live on the periphery of the city, Dalian is a wonderful place to live. That's my opinion. I know a lot of people like to live downtown in the center of the city. But for me, the center of Dalian is still quite run down and, and not very developed as such. Although there are pockets of modern, you know, modern skyscrapers and business districts and whatnot. But the real nice property and comfortable life is to be had in these areas where you're pretty close to nature. So I enjoy living in this city very much. It's a beautiful city. I'm sure one day I may have to leave and I'll be sad when that day comes. Here up on the left you can see some, some villas as they call them. They're sort of uh, McMansions. They're very, very large homes for the extremely wealthy. And these homes, just so you get an idea, they would cost millions of RMB, much more than you, it would cost to buy a house in New York City. It might be a little bit cheaper because we're not close to the city center, but still they'd be very expensive. Here you can see up ahead in the distance, there are some apartment complexes. Those would also be expensive, but much cheaper. Maybe two million RMB, something like that, two to three, or 1.5 to three million RMB.
not cheap. So two million would be about three hundred thousand dollars. Just for a small apartment. A concrete box. And then you have to renovate it unless you buy it secondhand, meaning it is just a box, literally just a box with no even the surfaces have not been finished. So you have to put down a floor, you have to put put up the walls, you have to uh, plaster the walls. Etc. Okay, I'm almost to the school and almost to Ed's house, and I am going to stop filming now and take this video home and see what 4K looks like on my my wonderful Huawei P40 Plus Pro Plus or whatever it's called, the high-end P40 that I bought secondhand. Very nice phone.